This is the original eSport racing game. This is iRacing. Sometimes one month capsulates everything that happens within a motorsport. Within any sport, you could argue. In this, our motorsport, the month of May becomes so crucial. You talk Indy 500, Monaco Grand Prix. You talk about the 600 in Charlotte. You talk about so many great races that happen up and down. And not only this... But in sim racing, there's some great races to be found, especially when May ticks over. We are in Brazelton, Georgia. It is the short layout here of Road Atlanta. Second time we've come to Atlanta this season. And here in AOSC, it is all about qualifying at the moment. 20 minutes, we're on the clock. We are down to nearly 15. And it is Harley Haber who has control of the field by a full hundredth of a second here on the iRacing Esports Network, brought to you by SimSpeed TV. It's Jake Sperry, joined alongside with Ross Rizzo from Trick SimSport, along with Josh Nowak on the cameras for us. And well, Mr. Rizzo, has to be said, look at the track conditions today. 46 degrees at the moment in qualifying, heavy northwesterly winds. This is going to be a really tough qualifying session, especially with track position so vital around a sub-minute lap. Oh, for sure. Don't envy these guys at all. I mean, it's pretty easy to pick up off tracks as it is, coming over the rise, um, having less grip, uh, going through those um, through the sections of uh, turn A, turn B, as well as well as the final corner. It's going to be really difficult to stitch a lap together and make it stick. So these guys have um, have a pretty tough uh, 15. They've got very tough laps on them at the moment. Marlon McMullen finds himself in second position at the moment. He crosses the line. He will not set a qualifying time on that go-by, but he's got a million different chances to set some lap times that he knows that he is very, very capable of getting. There are a lot of drivers here who want to prove themselves. Jackson Sujal and Harlow finds himself in third position in the Simworks TTL Esports car. He just comes out of pit road as Jonathan Ben finds himself into the wall. But Sujal and Harlow has himself a lot of redemption to sort of pick up here, Ross, after Philip Island in V8 Scops, especially after taking out not one, but two of his own teammates. Yeah, I think um, Jackson would probably appreciate we keep the discussion short on that one, as with the rest of TTL, but we know super talented uh, young guy, very, very quick, and is only only improving, so he's probably up for, um, probably due for a result. A lot of drivers are due for results at the moment. We have currently 41, uh, sorry, no, 40 drivers who are looking to take part at the moment in qualifying at the moment. Number 40 of them at the moment on my timing sheet is number 22, Brady Myers. Brady's bunch has been often finding himself at the front of the field, picking up massive victories, but it's that consistency or maybe appearance which has been costing him championship points. And of course, the leader in the championship at the moment, well, it's a familiar number, Ross, when it comes to Australian motorsport. It's Triple Eight. It's Carl Stokes, who's currently ninth at the moment in qualifying. It's great to see Scott, uh, uh, sorry, Carl Stokes really um, put his best foot forward. And you know, he's, he's put in a fantastic job uh, leading the championships. Yes, we've got the standings up at the moment on your screen. And Carl Stokes holds that advantage as slender as it may be. He's not had a race victory in the time that I've been commentating this series. That has been just the consistency value that Carl Stokes brings to the table. Everyone else has been a little bit hit and a little bit miss. And every driver from that second down 
is going to be looking to try and hunt and get some victories in the latter part of this season, an important latter part of this season as well. Drivers like the 143 machine, Jordan Ross, currently on a flyer at the moment. He's gone to eighth position on his last lap here, but this is the next big worry. These tyres, it may only be 2.83 kilometres here, Ross, but surely you're not going to get any more than one lap out of them as Brady Myers moves up into fourth place. No, definitely not. And you'll want to actually spend a lot of time in the pits here, I think. You're going to wait for that 46 degree temp um, track temp to cool down and hopefully put in a lap while there's some... Well, there's a lot that does go on. So we keep an eye out, though, on these times. But I do believe we are in static conditions at the moment in terms of what the track looks like because it is full, clear skies at the moment. There is not a single cloud that you can find this side of Atlanta. You have to look over to the next state if you're going to find a cloud that's going to help cool down this track. So it will be one lap pace. Jack G. Boyd in the 38 puts a tenth on the field 56 7 and he's gone rogue oh well done jack that was a that's a fantastic time especially seeing the margins uh from all the way down in the top 10 to gap by a field that's scotty mclaughlin-esque well that is fantastic from jack boyd who is one of the biggest up and comers at the moment in australian sim racing at the moment and in these australian touring cars they know exactly the abilities that they have available to them so now the next question becomes who can find the response as we are over half distance in qualifying it's a two race format as well tonight 21 laps a piece for both of them and Ross, you have to be feeling now, if you can get a good qualifying going, race one, you think about as Brett Loxton brings the Zuva car to second, instantly followed by Marlon McMullen. It's Piccadilly Circus. Yeah, it looks like they're coming to terms of the of the track net. And, it, you know, track position, extremely important. So you, if you can find even half a tenth, you need to go out and try again and again and again. You might pick up another another spot. Hell, if you're Harley Haber, you find one thousandth of a second, you find yourself on third position. And that could just be the difference maker. Your second margin barrier is the top 26. So 26 drivers split by a second. The driver in 26th at the moment is Guy Leach for the VH Sleuth team. So he'll be looking to try and push forward. Surprised to see Guy Leach down in that 26th position. He's been having some very strong form, I think, over the last two or three months or so, Ross. And it has to be said that his ability to battle is improving day by day. To be honest, I don't think Guy's all that, all that uh, troubled by his position at the moment. He's, we know he's a really good racer. He's super experienced. So he'll probably enjoy race one, trying to pick his way through the field. Probably has some sneaky strategy up uh, coming up for race one. I'm paying attention to Jacob Knight, who's yet to crack the top 20. And we know he had some great pace um, at Scops last weekend. So he'll probably want to get a wiggle on to get into that top 15, where he probably deserves to be. Yes, he's trying everything. He's currently in that 23rd position and he's not quite found what he's looking for as he gets back up onto the power through two and now into three in this beautiful flowing S's section. You then flick your way through four and then you got five and five A up the hill and now it's a flick right for six instead of the left and you can see he's all over the curve and now this very difficult right hander which seemingly goes on forever ross and probably is the biggest tire killer as you see jacob knight have three stabs of trying to keep that vehicle straight i can't see i can't wait to see the racecraft coming out of that corner obviously we'd normally go up towards the north end of the circuit and have a 90 degree right hander going down a very long back straight but this time we've got a flowing s where you've got to lean on that le um, left rear tire so i'm very curious to see how guys are going to manage the corner sequences before to line up a move yes it's going to be very interesting indeed at the moment we've got an all michael fifth row right now we've got michael taliancic in triple seven and michael cracknell in the 205 both of them are knocking on the door cracknell's already had a win to his name this season taliancic has been right up there in the likes of super split two races in v8 scop so both drivers know they've got that pace and let's not forget Here's a driver in the 201 who has been probably the biggest surprise of the season so far in all of the V8, Andrew Gilliam. Yep, that's probably understatement of, um, of the season so far. 
Pursuit Sim Racing recruited really well, not just with Andrew, but uh, Gary Cooper, I think, making his, his um, no, Job Stewart making his debut for PS uh, for Pursuit Sim Racing tonight. But yeah, Andrew's been super impressive in the official series. And again, watch for him to have some good results. Talking of drivers who are getting results right now, James Mackay and Jordan Ross have both jumped up into 10th and 11th respectively. So they both got some pretty good times as Marlon McMullen beats it up with another tenth of a second lopped off a of Jack Boyd. They're finding not fractions here around Atlanta. They are finding full chunks and they're lopping them off like samurai swordsmen lopping off limbs. I'm looking at them all stream out of the pits after seeing that lap. There's time to be made out there, so they they need to get going. The track temp has dropped ever so slightly, so I'm wondering That's if enough. now we're going to see even more. Yes, exactly. We're going to see uh, more chopping and changing towards the end. One degree makes all the difference, and every driver knows it. You've got Matthew Deere, Andrew Gilliam, and Jacob Knight all together at the moment trying to get their lap times all sorted out nicely as we are getting to that four-minute warning very, very soon. Who's your drafting partner? Who can you get out there who's going to help you? How many teammates are you going to have who's going to help you out a little bit further down the line? And what sort of gap are you going to be able to get? And how good's your run coming under Suzuki Bridge into the quote 10A, out of 10A, 10B, and into the quote turn 10 that we have to finish this lap? So a lot of drivers, a lot of moving and shaking. The one driver we haven't talked about in the top 10, James Duckworth. He's currently in sixth position as Brady Myers, I do believe, has just moved himself down into seventh overall. Yep, some good pace from James uh, James recently, and Brady was super quick at Phillip Island. I would have expected him to be much, much more challenging towards the front of the field, given the similarities between the two circuits of Road Atlanta and um, Phillip Island. So I'm expecting to see a little bit more out of that um, TTL card yet. I think it's a lot more technical, though, on this short layout. You have to remember they're not getting the full benefit of that massively long straight that runs at about a kilometre, so they only have, I believe, about a third of that, though, which is probably going to mean that surely drivers are going to be trying to run a downforce-heavy setup. Yeah, you'll probably want the the front end of the car super responsive, but you don't want the rear end too dicey as, uh, um, either, because you're going to need to get drive out of a, out of a lot of these corners to get the speed going down into uh, the usual turn eight. Yes, and that's what I think a lot of drivers are starting to focus on and trying to hope they can get top five. McMullen, Boyd, Haber, Loxton and Susan Harlow, your top five. Then you've got Duckworth, Myers, Gilliam, Taliancic and Mackay. That's how the top ten looks. Championship leader is back down in 13th position. Behind him, someone that we've talked about already here with two and a half minutes to go on the clock. And that is Job Stewart. Yeah, having a pretty solid uh, solid run so far. Hopefully liking his new new home at um, Pursuit Sim Racing and hopefully the experience of um, Tali Ansic and um, David Kinman uh, helping that team move along. And they're going to try and move forward as much as they can here in this 41-car field. Sorry, the likes of uh, Jet Bennett, Tony Gaffer, Nick Hausler and Mark Dial are locking out the rear of the field at the moment. But... It is all about the front. Who can find that magical time? And that track has come down again another degree. 44 degrees now. Everyone's got to start making moves here and get that time in. Get the fresh rubber on and make sure it is absolutely banzai. Let's not forget here, Ross, they have until the end of their finished lap after the 20 minutes to get it over the line. Once 20 minutes expires, that's it. That's your final lap attempt. Yes, and I've just noticed the two TTL cars of Myers and Harlow have hooked up and it looked like they're about to start off. Oh, and Jack Boyd, I believe, has just pushed himself uh, back into... Sorry, that's Jordan Ross. Sorry, he's moved up into fourth position there very late on. So a minute to go. Everyone's going to be looking to get their laps in. Who's out there on track who can really make something happen? Brett Loxton is in the 209. He pushes himself over. Can he get a bit more for the moment? No, he does not. So he will now go on to his final lap attempt. And he's got to find himself two tenths if he wants to get himself up out of fifth place. Uh, if you're starting a lap right now, it looks like the best time to possibly do one. The track temp is still trickling down ever so... 
ever so slightly and we are seeing now just how much that all these drivers want to push duckworth in the 911 he's out on a lap as well he's going to try and get everything as is carl stokes jonathan ben on lap as well as the likes of Jack Boyd and Jackson, Susan Harlow. And Susan Harlow is getting tow from Myers, but Boyd's getting tow from the pair of them. They cross the line. They've got one shot left if they want to make anything happen. So we'll keep an eye on that as they will be some of the last drivers to cross the line. Ben will get his lap. Carl Stokes will get his final lap as well, as will James Duckworth, who pushes the line 56-7. He moves to fourth. Great lap time by Duckworth, but it could always fall more and more and more. Timer expires. Gillian will not go any quicker. He was on an outlap. Sattler will try and make his push to the line, as will Jacob Knight, who is all the way down in 26th position at the moment. Surely looking for a little bit more. He pushes over the line, and he does a 57-3. That moves him up into 19th position. Great work. Stephen Varga has been hit or miss so far over the course of this season. He needs to have a really strong qualifying, and he does a 57-5 that... Pushes him no quicker over the course of this lap. Smart comes across the line. Now watch for Myers here, who's in eighth position. Can he find more? He's all over the grass trying to come to the line. He will not find improvement. Susan Harlow will also not find improvement. So the question became, could uh, the likes of a certain uh, one more driver find it? For the moment, it looked like Jordan Ross could not go any quicker. And Kyle Stokes couldn't either. So that's everyone done. This is how the grid will stack. Marlon McMullen holds on for pole position in a 56.6 time. He holds off Jack Boyd on the front row for Gone Rogue. Harley Haber for Redback starts third with James Duckworth in fourth. Jordan Ross will start this one from fifth with Brett Loxton sixth. Jackson Susan Harlow locks out row four with Brady Myers for TTL Esports with Michael Taliancic and James Mackay rounding row five. Just outside the top 10, we have Gilliam Cracknell, a championship leader, Stokes, new PSS signing, Job Stewart, Christian Smart, who popped up in the dying moments, David Kinman, James, uh, Damian Johnston, Greg Sharp, James Scott, and Jay. Yes, 21st position then will go to Guy Leach with Matt Morris in 22nd. Then you've got Scott Clark and Mitchell Bales. Kai Sloggett starts from 25th with Matthew Deere, Jamie Stovold, Stephen Varga down in 28th with Daniel Stevens and Gary Cooper rounding out 30. Then we have Matt Lapoidovan, Peter Sattler, Shane Evans, Matthew Clote, Chris Barnes, Jonathan Ben, Jet Bennett, Tony Gaffer, Nick Hauser, and the final two cars, Mark Dial and... Tony Webb not setting a lap time then in the qualifying session. But 21 laps worth of racing. This is going to be aggressive racing. This lap is only a minute long. This is elbows out style racing. And they know that for all of the racing that we have seen from them in Australian touring cars, they've got to show that these are some of the very, very best. McMullen trying to keep his championship on track. Same with Jack Boyd. And they know this is the biggest advantage of the lot, knowing that Triple Eight is a mile down the order with a lot of work to do to push up forward to the field. Two minutes to grid, or you start from that dreaded place known as Pit Road. Ross, your pick then as we head over towards Green Flag Running. Ooh, it's a it's a tough one, but I'm I'm thinking we've got some sleepers in uh, probably in the likes of Jordan Ross and Brett Loxton, and also Michael Taliantich getting into the top ten, who's not a particularly um, well known qualifier, but is a good strategist. So I'm keeping an eye on Taliantich. That trip. We certainly will, but it's 85 that everyone will now be racing to beat as this top 14 is stacked as they will all look to try and push. Remember, it's filing this grid all the way out through that final corner. That's going to give some drivers on the inside the advantage. Lights will come on on top of the iRacing gantry. Lights will go out. We are green, and we are underway here at Road Atlanta. What a start from Jack Boy. He pulls alongside, and he will try and stream away around the outside in the Gone Road car as we look down the inside. A little half look from Susan Harlow, but the jump is there from Boyd. Now Haber will try and take advantage. He's on the outside now, heading to turn number three, and can he get it all sorted? Cold tyres, remember, are going to be nightmarish through this S section to start, and two positions lost for McMullen instantly as Duckworth goes on the offensive. And look at the, that lead just ever increase from, from all that checking up back in my home. 
Oh, so much checking up. I mean, you can now see it here. But Mullen under pressure. Duckworth at 10A, 10B is going to now be the big aggressor. Can he look for it? He's going to try on the outside. He knows all about being aggressive. Of course, he's got that real life experience and he's all over the back bumper. Big wiggle. Here comes Jordan Ross now. He will try and pick up the position. He'll look to the inside. Not quite yet. Turn one's probably going to be the best place possible. As Susan Harlow and Brett Loxton will also try and get in. And there's drama in the background. There's almost contact there between, I believe that was Job Stewart and also uh, Michael Cracknell. As now Carl Stokes tries to find a level head, heading through turn number one. Championship leaders in a massive battle pack. Oh, and James Scott has just lost a whole heap of positions running wide out of, out of turn one. He's going to try and stick around the outside of the um, EX Exto Motorsports car, and it looks like he's gotten the... He's gotten around, and he's gotten around nicely there. Jacob Knight was that vehicle behind that. You've got Matt Morris trying to be the aggressor, and he's not quite in a position through this long, looping right-hander. Look a little bit further forward. Here's Jackson Susan Harlow. Oh, he's all the way over on the grass there. Heavy defending. ERT versus TTL, and they do have that history. TTL know they want to be the aggressors here. Jordan Ross was trying everything and a bit more to keep Susan Harlow behind, but the inevitable tie is inevitable. There's one position, and here comes the second. Oh, no. Jordan Ross, big moment, loses two for his mistakes. Oh, he has suffered from that mistake. De Leon and the TTL car into Florent Locks. Yeah, we're seeing some stalwarts with um, stalwart teams with uh, new signings going at it. That's a pretty cool, um, pretty cool paradigm, I think. I think it is a very, very cool paradigm. And now we are seeing drivers making the mistakes, knowing that they've got to be aggressive. This is lap three of 21. They're already a seventh of the way through this race and they have to be out there the top four are pulling away but now it's starting to splinter come two groups of two duckworth and mcmullen fighting for the podium but now look at harley haver he's now all over the back of jack boy looking for the race lead and if he can find himself a way through he's going to be in a mightily good position to go out there and try and run away with the second half of this race which will be coming up very very soon but look as well behind brady myers is under pressure brett loxton wants to get out there and get aggressive but the leading battle are nose to tail well, I think if, Har if Harley Haber can get to that lead, he's going to be hard to catch from there. But I think Marlon's got a little bit more pace than he's leading on, as do the TTL. As do the TTL guys side by side as Andrew Gilliam now loses out to Job Stewart, who cuts away through the outside of turn four. A very uh, accomplished move there by the 094, who will now hold on to that position as they make their way to 10A and 10B coming up as they smack on the brakes on this downhill braking zone. A very tough braking zone as well, but Gilliam's not giving this one up here. Back down the inside at 10A. Has he got the overlap? He has, and that is a well-defended position. Looks like he made it kind of easy for him, but now he'll be able to use Andrew's pace to try and catch up to the to the um, pack just ahead of him. They aren't that far. They are not that far away. They are only a few tenths of a second behind Gilliam that time across the line was nine tenths back of Tali Ancic so a lot of work to be done but work that definitely can be done around this track as drivers will start to try and work out where do I start being aggressive where do I look to go out there and attack at the moment looking to attack will be Damian Johnstone he's trying to get past David Kidman a little bit uh, further back but look at McMullen who may just have had himself technical difficulties and that may have just cost him the race oh he was sizing up to to go pretty well but the race will carry on without him look look at the battle for third place as well the tt um looks like jackson susan harlow he got a 56 in the last time round, which is the only car that i can see that got a 56 last time so he's still got some good pace in that he's got more than good pace he's got great pace and he's going to try and use that 57 flat half a second quicker than duckworth that last time by compared to the leaders, took a tenth and a half out. So Suzlan Harlow is the man on the move, the man on the mission. And, well, there are no surprises. He's an incredibly talented 75 driver. Job Stewart making the move on uh, Ross, uh, sorry, Jordan Ross, but wasn't able to do it. And now... Oh, championship leader involved. ERT, yes, ERT trying to get themselves two in and trying to work together. Carl Stokes nearly found himself uh, in a wall of Job. Oh, he won't want that. And now he's got the Zubacar um, sizing him up for a move down into the into the chicane. Looks like his race is just going from bad. 
Well, you might be mad, but at the moment he could very nearly be Crackers as uh, Crackers almost makes the move. Michael Cracknell, and he will have to sit and wait for that chance again. Defensive line being taken as now both ERT drivers dive in early for their mandatory pit stop. So they come in and they make that call together, and that's a very bold and brave call together. Here's the next question I'll be asking. Susan Harlow, as he gets a little held up there by Duckworth, heading through turn number three, does he pit now and try and get the undercut strategy working? I think the best plan is to pit in race one, but you want to... Uh, um sorry on your way back through the field you want to be passing as few cars as you can which means you need to stay out so he's in a really difficult position you can try and get the undercut or he's just going to um, lose more time sitting behind but if he stays out he'll effectively be passing more cars as he does mid 57s while the midfield do mid 58s that's very very true and of course what reason does he have to come in when he is effectively the fastest man on track as the front two now start to see jack boyd pull away ever so slightly as his tyres are getting accustomed to the hot conditions here in Braselton, Georgia as Jacob Knight now dives his way onto pit road, the only taker that last time by to the lane as Matt Lapoidovin's in his own little scrap a little further down the order here with Scott Clark and the 27 right now is trying everything and a little bit more to make a way through but Lapoidovin in that Erebus inspired car is just not quite able to get any chance to go through Erebus inspired I think if you ask Jaden Borg it's actually the other way around um that it was the <laughs> the, pen, the, the, the Penrite logos that appeared first on the Stealth Simforce cars and then the Erebus followed ah well there look see we see uh, a little bit of history then being made in terms of where Erebus comes from uh, in terms of strategy and momentum at the moment as uh, just looking at Duckworth now he's currently uh, just managed to pull himself a little bit of a gap but I'm wondering here if everyone's just starting to stretch themselves out maybe a little bit thinner over this and this is just going to make life a little bit difficult traffic coming out of pit road is christian smarty will have to get out of the way here of jackson susan harlow and he almost uh, checks up and makes a mistake and now he'll be in the middle of the road for brady myers it's such a tough rejoin on pit exit as well because you're straight into the s's complex oh and the and our race leader is catching up to, up to coming ah, catching up to some traffic now who have fresh tires but will probably get swallowed up by the superior pace of jack at them and they're going to want to stay on the lead lap to get a reverse uh, the reverse grid position advantage. Oh yes they will and that's going to be so so vital if they can get that reverse grid it's going to mean the world and a bit more but look at Susan Harlow once again he's going to try and push now he's going to try and find a way through on James Duckworth he's got a good run down the hill out of 12 and now over the start finish line that difference maker at the moment is three tenths of a second big bold move down to the inside but he's going to not have enough running that outside track Duckworth is able to defend here as we almost hit half distance Hmm, I wonder if that was a move more to psych than anything else. He's too far back to make anything of it. He's right under the rear wing now, so he might be sizing up something now. He very much could be it. He just runs a little bit wide. That will be one of the 15 off-track instant points that they have here for the two reverse races. Uh, uh, sorry, for the two races that they have, one of which will be a reverse grid race. They also have to be careful a little bit further back because I'm keeping an eye on Michael Taliancic at the moment. He is right there with Brett Loxton and Loxton could lose the sixth position if he's not too careful about the way that he's going to drive the rest of this race so now this question becomes at what point do you come in Gilliam is the one who decides to dive in in the 201 and where will Gilliam come out compared to the likes of Kyle Stokes and also Jordan Ross who are backing it out in the track in the mid-20s positions Oh, this traffic's getting a bit chaotic on the pit exit. Haber's just t taken a bit of a chunk out of, out of Boyd, but then got a face full of back markers, so now it's all stretched back. It has stretched back just a little bit, so Harley Haber's got to be a bit careful as he's now starting to drop the draft from Jack Boyd, and that's not going to be ideal, as still that battle for third, fourth, and very nearly fifth as well is starting to come into fruition at the moment. Is Susan Harlow going to be content with just sitting behind? He won't have the chance to make move into 10 a 10 b unless he runs it deep, and he very nearly just gives a nice little love tap there to 
Duckworth, who is a little unsettled on pit e on the exit there of 10B. And this could be the perfect chance now. Trying to run that inside line. Susan Harlow, the best that he's ever seen, now moves himself to the inside. Is it going to be plain sailing? We've seen that outside line work, though, for... Uh, for Duckworth, it will not now. He loses the position, trying to get the cutback. He won't get it. Brett Loxton, though, on the other hand, is now down on pit row. Yeah, probably a smart call from from Brett taking the pain now, not only in the hotter conditions, but then getting the benefit of the reverse grid. If he's assuming he stays on the lead lap, which you know this track is only 56 seconds long, it doesn't take my uh, to be on the wrong side of a pit stop error, and you're. Yes, it doesn't take long at all, and it is very, very quick that you can find yourself in error. And well, like right now, someone in error is Kyle Stokes because he's in all sorts of battling right now. He's got to get past the lap traffic of, uh, actually not lap traffic, battle for position mark dial. And he'll have to go around the outside to make that one work. And you will be able to get it, though. And look at that oh. from Jacob Knight, scything away down the inside and staying with uh, J uh, Kyle Stokes, the championship leader. And soon, Stokes is now going to be under pressure heading to 10A, 10B. Uh, how good was the commitment and the trust there from, uh, from Jacob Knight to that the Redback car wouldn't turn down on him. Well, we've seen that commitment, we've seen that trust, and now it's all about how you work with drivers who are maybe a little bit slower on a different strategy called to you. That's what I think every driver is starting to keep a focus on, as Boyd and Haver at the moment have lapped maybe only a handful of vehicles out on track effectively as they make their way through 10A and 10B as they will have themselves seven laps to go at the line. Does anybody dive down onto the lane from those front two? No, they're going to play that chicken game. They're going to go, okay, which one's going to jump out of the vehicle and which one's going to be the celebrity coming after it? It looks like Brett Loxton is the first of the cars that have pitted as the um, as Andrew Gilliam and the two ERT cars of Jordan Ross and Carl Stokes have come out behind. Oh, oh, correction, Myers. He's come out of nowhere to suddenly put himself in a strong position, not so much for this race, but definitely for race two. Yeah, well, he's ahead of Brett Loxton. No surprises there, but this is going to be important. Matt Lapoidovin has come down onto the lane. James Duckworth also. So Duckworth deciding he's going to make that late call, but he's staying there a pretty long time. He's got to get up on the power quickly, and already... Brady Myers finds a way through. Now it's going to be a battle off the exit here, which Brett Loxton very clearly wins. Gilliam's not going to have enough time, so positions lost then in that pit stop strategy coming along for James Duckworth, and that is a big faux pas. Oh, so my theory's just gone completely out the window. You've got to race the guys around you now. Oh, you absolutely do. And look at some of the drivers who have stayed out. Job Stewart is one of them. Tani Ancic has stayed out. Kinman, Stovold. Both of them have decided to stay out. You're leading two, of course, Haber and Boyd. They are six tenths of a second apart at the moment. Equal, they are trading lap times. And this is what we are starting to see here. It's that trade which these two drivers are now starting to think about here. They're thinking about, okay, do I have to let them in? Do I have to make that stop now? Do I wait to the next race to make something happen? Or am I going to be looking for something a little bit later down the line? Out of pit row comes Jackson, Susan, and Harlow. And Harlow's going to be behind absolutely everyone here. They're three wide coming off for the pit exit. And Susan Harlow will lose out. But they are battling it out, I believe. That's with Chris Barnes, who is yet to pit. And he will be freight trained behind all of them. As at the moment, Susan Harlow still can't find a way past Duckworth. Oh, that's that's disaster for, for Harlow. But he is still in the hunt. I'm more worried about our two leaders at the moment. Um, they're in a really tough position because if they do t take their medicine and take their pit stop now, they may well come, come way out behind the guys that they had completely covered at the start of the race. But if they don't pit, they're going to end up at the back and be in big trouble for Ray. They are, and there's traffic issues coming for Jack Boyd. He's stuck behind Daniel Stevens, and this is the advantage maker that Harley Haber was looking for. The inside line they all get for the big, long right-hander, and Haber all of a sudden smells a little bit of blood. It was gone rogue motorsports. It's almost gone wrong motorsports at the moment for Jack Boyd. On the brakes, left-right chicane of 10A, 10B coming up. Now here comes the question. Five laps to go at the stripe. Anybody deciding they want to come down and burn their pit stop? Both stay out. Both are going to decide we're going to battle this one for the race win because the next driver is eight seconds, nine seconds down the road in the form of Job Stewart. 
think um, Harley's content with just letting the racer inside of both of them uh, run free and trying to battle. But if he wants to just beat Jack, he should just pit now. He'll get the uh, not only the undercut, and then hopefully protect himself a little bit more from the guys that have pitted. He'll have superior pace coming to the end, so he might have a little bit more of a chance to start this way back to Talk about drivers who just come down in. Michael Taliancic came in last lap, and he is ahead of Chris Barnes, but he's behind the entirety of the pack that he was fighting with. So he's lost a lot of time by making that pit stop so late. And this is what I think drivers are looking at now. It's about late on the break, sorry, from Harley Haber. He was all shades of sideways trying to get the vehicle stopped and he's all over Jack Boyd. If you pit now, you're gonna lose so much more time because your tires are so much older now than everybody else's. You're gonna lose out in the strategy. You have to stay out and bite the bullet in the second race. This is what Harley Haber's now got to think about with four laps to go right on the rear and getting a little bit of curb to boot. Jack Boyd's now got to defend for everything and a little bit more. I, I think Harbour, Haber's got the, me the measure at the moment, but Jack, he needs to just keep hitting his marks. He's got to make it extremely difficult for Harley to get through. Sure, he's got the pace advantage, but it is difficult to make a move here. So just focus on the apex and he should be able to get it, but I don't think it's going to be quite that not that simple you can definitely tell there's an effect here in these australian touring cars that they're not going to try and look but haber's gonna shove away to the inside oh he gives a bump as they head through 10a now through 10b haber's starting to put the aggressive factor on and jack boy's now sensing it here okay now you're gonna start playing love taps with me well two can tango as they now have three laps to go here in the first race at road atlanta and let's also not forget here in this situation brady myers is currently in eighth position right now and he's got to try and find a way past scott clark and stephen varga in the final three laps as well that's going to be the big telling point as everybody from first down to seventh is going to stay out and take the pit stop in the second race and myers definitely has the pace to catch the two in front he's over a second a lap quicker on those fresher top Oh, and Harlow and Myers are starting now to, uh, sorry, Harlow and Loxton starting to fight. And Brett Loxton uh, seemingly has lost himself out in the position. Harlow has got past Duckworth, got past Loxton. Finally, he gets a bit of fresh air to go out there and attack. But at what cost? Because he's run himself out of time if he's going to make this happen. But now it's about Boyd and Haber at the front of the field. Two laps to go. And Jack Boyd is starting to stretch the margin. It's back out to half a second once more. That looks like he's got his mojo back. Oh, he's got all of his mojo and a little wiggle coming out of one as they now start pushing it towards the end of this opening race. The other drivers now are just trying to find a bit of consistency. Talk about drivers who've done well. David Kinman's in fourth. Jamie Stovold there in fifth position. Great running from him at the moment as uh, Varga and Clark uh, at the moment find themselves good. But Brady Myers is really chasing in. And I think this may be position given very soon. Not careful for Scott Clark. So that's actually Jackson Susan Harlow who is trying to find a way around the outside. So he's not going to be able to find that move. But the white flag will come out now for Jack Boyd who has one lap to go. And Harley Haber is very slow and takes the pit very, very late. He hangs out Jack Boyd to drive, but he hits the pit wall twice, heading himself down in. He's now going to be crawling his way now around this final lap as he goes through. Massive mistake from Haber. Was that too rash from young Haber? We've got to have a think about that one. But for the time being, at least, white flag for Jack Boyd, who has been forced to stay out as long as he possibly can. Where will Haber come out? How much damage will Haber have? And will he have anything mandatory that he will have to use in his pit stop as well? There are no fast repairs, so you're not going to be able to get out and away again. Uh, sorry, you do have one fast repair. He gets himself out of the way using that fast repair. He's behind Brady Myers. He's behind Jackson Susan Harlow. As uh, now Duckworth, I think, just hit the DQ limit. And that's him gone out of this race. So Gilliam's going to find himself a way through as well uh, there as he gets himself through. But here's Jack G. Boyd. Yes, he's got the victory, but at what cost? Because he has lost the strategy game overall. Jack Boyd 
wins the opening race here at Road Atlanta. It will be Job Stewart who will come to the line and pick up second position overall. And David Kinmond will get a podium in third position. It will be Jamie Stovold fourth. And Stephen Varga will try and hold off Brady Myers. But look at the tyres as they battle for the final spot inside the top five. This is massive here as they head through the final corner. Brady's got nothing to fight with on the exit, but great battling throughout. That really exploded in those last couple of laps, having to make the last last minute pit stop. And I think if Haber hadn't have hit the wall, he might have actually been quite a lot better off because he still ended up... Where did he finish? I've got eighth place here. Yeah, that's not too bad considering the car was beaten up. That car was beaten up. He did use the fast repair, which was very key. Kyle Stokes only manages 17th position. That's a big disaster for him in race number one. But let's get classified results then up on your screen because this is how everything finishes from race one of the evening. So Jack Boyd picks up the win, but his strategy must involve a stop. In the next race, he will start from the very, very back as they reverse the grid. Job Stewart gets second with David Kidman in third. Jamie Stovold and Stephen Varga make the top five. All of them have to come in and make a stop in the second race. Brady Myers finishes in sixth position. He is the first driver who will have no stops available to him. Effectively, best of the bunch. Jackson Susan Harlow gets seventh with Harley Haver rounding out eight. Then we have Andrew Gilliam and Scott and Scott Clark. Jordan Ross with that early pit stop, sort of coming good in the end. I'm surprised he got, he managed to recover as well as he did. Then we have Michael Taliantic, a late, uh, another late pitter. Bright Loxton fared fairly reasonably uh, out of that one. James Scott. Then we have James McKee, Michael Cracknell, our championship leader Kyle Stokes. Probably a, uh, probably a little bit disappointed with that result. Jacob Knight, who made his way forward slightly. Matt Morris with a quiet race, and Chris Barnes rounding out the top twenty. 21 goes to Matthew Deer with Greg Sharp, 22nd. Damian Johnstone, Matt Lapoidevin, and crucially, Mitchell Bales will take the pole with position 25. James Duckworth's disqualification means 26th only for him. Gary Cooper, Daniel Stevens, one lap down, along with Nick Hausler and also Peter Statler. Also off the lead lap and unfortunately missing out on the reverse grid, we have Matthew Clote, Shane Evans, Jonathan Ben, Jet Bennett, um, Guy Leach, Mark Dial, Tony Gaffer, Christian Smart, who actually had a pretty good start by the look of things, but uh, seemed to have come into um, car dramas. Marlon McMullen, with that unfortunate disconnect, was definitely on for a result in, um, in race one. And the real field rounded out by Kai Sloggett and Toby. And we are going to step aside very briefly here on the iRacing Esports Network, because when we come back, we're going to be starting to hit over towards race number two. And my goodness, the strategy is going to be massive. The championship swing even more so.
Hi there, I'm Richard Jobling, Senior Software Engineer here at iRacing. I'd like to show you some of the work that we've been doing to improve the collision and the damage in our sim. One of the major changes we've made is how our collision systems work. The old system stored the track as parametric surfaces and the cars were made of collections of spheres. As the cars moved around the track, we would recompute planes using the track surfaces and then test those against the spheres. This worked well for spheres, but it was too specialized to adapt to our shapes. So for the new system, we've built new high resolution meshes for each track. This is more efficient and gives us a lot more flexibility for the car shapes. The new mesh incorporates all the track features our guys work so hard to replicate. Things like curb geometry and changes in the surface material are all baked into the mesh. We've also taken our laser scan data and applied that to the mesh. And since the mesh is so high resolution, we capture all the detail that's necessary so that the tracks are just like the real thing. With our new mesh, we can now represent cars using smooth convex hulls, which grouped together form the chassis, the bodywork, and all the other parts of the car. The new shapes are a much closer fit to the shape of the real car. During impacts, the shapes can deform according to the damage, and eventually they can break off as separate objects. All the parts, like wings, hoods and wheels, can also hang from their joints, flapping and vibrating until they eventually snap off. All these changes are going to add a whole new level of realism to our races. If you want to find out more, please visit iRacing.com and check out my blog post for lots more details. Hi, my name is Greg Hill. I'm the Vice President of Art and Production here at iRacing. This damage project that um, we've been discussing is certainly a project that involved uh, all hands on deck to uh, pull off. We've got a rather sizable uh, number of cars in our portfolio and not all of these cars have been built with this dynamic uh, damage system um, in mind. So what we had to do is one by one go through our race cars and our, we had a team of uh, three artists, a uh, highly technical modeler, our technical art director, and our associate art director. All took on each car one at a time, and the work involved was researching that car, uh, researching what would happen to that car if it were in a crash. Um, depending on the forces involved in the crash, how severely it would be damaged, what parts might come off, what those pieces might look like when they're removed, what it would look like where the car um, is kind of has areas exposed that were previously covered by bodywork. So they had to do a lot of modeling to each race car uh, and they had to do a lot of work to essentially set up how the car would react to forces. So essentially setting the strength of the materials. Uh, what kind of force would it take to rip off the side pod, for example? or under what circumstances would this nose cone get ripped off of a car? Or under which would it remain, but just be badly damaged? But all said, it's been a lot of work, but it, seeing the car models interact with the physics system and the new crash dynamics is, is really exciting and really cool to see, and uh, definitely makes all that hard work worth it. Hi, my name is Jose Diaz. I'm a visual effects artist at iRacing. I specialize in particle effects ranging from fireworks to water fountains, debris, crash, impacts, all in the service of improving the driving experience. So you have the main sort of new damage model that Richard's been working on. So I've taken into consideration all the mounts and the, the chassis from the cars and which materials they are and he's making all the calculations that tell you like, okay, it got hit from this one side and the strength of that impact is this certain amount of values. If you hit something, that means that this mount gets off, something breaks. This gets added on top of that to sort of um, complement what is happening there with things that you would see in real life when a car crashes. So in, typically in a car crash, you will see all these little particles of dust, metal, uh, scratches, that will take all that force and momentum and kind of explode in a way. And it's all being driven by how fast the car was coming, 
how hard the impact was uh, against what that will give you that sense of like man that person really crashed hard or oh it was just a small bump hi my name is chris lurch i'm one of the vehicle dynamicists here at iRacing our role in the collision project is to tune the collision properties of each and every car to ensure that they behave and wrecks as a real car would. And we've spent quite a bit of time going through literature from the automotive industry on the subject to make sure that we have panels that deform the way they're supposed to, uh, both temporarily and permanently, that pieces that don't deform, but rather just break, break at appropriate times in appropriate ways. The cars are absorbing energy the way they should and aren't sort of bouncing off the walls in crazy ways. The major properties that we look at are stiffnesses, which is how much a piece of the car deforms when a load is applied to it. And then we look at a couple of limits. Um, one is the force limit beyond which the piece deforms permanently. And then the second limit that we look at is the brake limit, the force limit beyond which the piece will simply break. And then we also will look at damping, which is how Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to AOSC action here at Road Atlanta in these Australian touring cars, the Holden and the Ford. We have seen a very strategic race number one. Race two is going to be absolutely sensational. The reverse grid brings massive changes, as does conditions. It's got a lot later in the day. We're looking at around... 20 past 7 in sim time. Track temp down to just 28 degrees. Ross Rizzo joining me here in the commentary booth. I'm Jake Sperry. Ross, times have come down. Tyres are going to be less of a factor. 21 laps becomes a massive, massive race. Oh, for sure. It's going to be really exciting, especially watching the the field bunched up from the from the inverted grid positions. It's going to be very exciting. There's extra grip. There's going to be extra, I guess, incentive uh, to show a little bit more commitment and uh, get passes done. It's going to be a great... Well, the true Jay Kennedy adage is that you sometimes need a bit of Commitment Plus, which is, I believe, the subscription service that comes along to commitment from time to time. So <laughs> we'll see how many drivers are going to find themselves with Subscription Plus. Uh, sorry, not Subscription Plus, with Commitment Plus. Sorry there as I uh, get my, uh, my words fuddled. Um, but for the time being, at least, practice times have just started creeping into the 55s and now these drivers who have that opportunity at the front of the field know they've got to seize it by as much as they possibly can we know that those drivers who are in the reverse have to be really aggressive and get by drivers and race drivers they're not normally available to race against practice is over and in just a couple of moments time we'll be able to get the grid up for you for the reverse for the great racing that we've got another 21 laps worth of action and this one for now, is going to be for all the marbles in the jar. All the cookies in the jar as well. So, pole position will go to Mitchell Bales with Matt Lapoidovin alongside. Damien Johnstone will start from third with Greg Sharp fourth. It's Matthew Deere and Chris Barnes on row three. Row four sees Matt Morris and Jacob Knight. Carl Stokes and Michael Cracknell round out the fifth row. 11th place is James McKee. Then James Scott, Brett Loxton, Michael Taliancic. Jordan Ross, Scott Clark, Andrew Gilliam, Harley Haber, and Jackson Susan Harlow, who had a fantastic ra uh, race uh, one. Watch for them. And Brady Myers rounding. Rest of your grid will cycle on your screen. Don't forget the likes, of course, of Duckworth in 26th, Jack Boyd in 25th position, and Marlon McMullen right at the back in 39th overall. So this now becomes a case for these drivers at the front. They've got to be very, very careful and cautious. Hard chargers, Kyle Stokes, Jacob Knight. Those are the two to look out for as the green flag drops. Watch out for Matt Morris as well, who got a great start. But at the front, it's going to be Mitchell Bales who struggles. Matt LaPointe been again the outside line, working fantastically, which is the racing line has the most grip as they make their way into turn number one. Jacob Knight falls to hit three wide. There's contact. Brown will go one of the vehicles. I think that was Chris Barnes who's gone off along with Jacob Knight. So issues already in the early stages. Crucially, Jack championship leader is unscathed as Cracknell goes around the outside of him as they head through the S's section. 
Oh, big, big mess at turn two. Uh, can't see the cars involved, but there were quite a few. There was a lot of drivers who got themselves involved, and they have to be careful about getting themselves too worked up in battles here and there as they've got to get aggressive early. Jordan Ross makes away past James Scott. There's now Jackson, Susan and Harlow tries to make a move through. There's contact. Susan Harlow's on the grass. Can he get it sorted? No, he tags Jordan Ross. Ross has to take to the grass. Big, big incident between ERT and TTL once again. And there will be a redress, I think, from Jackson, Susan Harlow after that one. Are we not sure? One big off, two big off. Cracknell's in the wall at the final corner with a KRF cut and a merger doesn't work. And that's Matthew Deere up and over and out. Oh my goodness, a lot exploding in that race. Not only championship uh, problems for one of the championship contenders in Jordan Ross, but that's a oh, very, very unusual mistake from the... But we'll get a replay up on screen of everything that's happened and Cracknell's race is day and done. A lot of drivers' races are day and done. Very early on, the cold conditions, that adjustment factor, the more oversteer that's there, really catching drivers out as we've just caught the replay. Here's Jordan Ross, though. He's now trying to attack Stephen Varga here in the Redback Racing Car. Remember, he's got to play rear gunner for Harley Haber at the moment. So they get on the brakes into the left, right, chicane 10, 8, 10, B. But Varga's got no chance. And in fact, Varga's got two no chances as Stovold tries to make a way through. Remember, Stovold's got to make that stop. Andrew Gilliam now on the outside. He can't find a way through. He's trying to probe for information. Two little looks of moves as Brett Loxton tries to attack Kyle Stokes. And now here comes Matt Morris trying to get down the inside of Greg Sharp as they head to turn number three and he can't quite get the top five in a train. Well, slow exit for, for Loxton out of turn two as well. Nearly got caught up with uh, with McKee, who's now got a TTL, uh, a TTL car of Jackson Seuss and Harlow breathing down his neck. We know he's got pace, so... Uh, oh, Matt Morris also uh, uh, catching up to Greg Sharp. Looks like he's sizing him up on the inside into turn 10-8. Yes, always a good opportunity. Susan Harlow makes the move, and there is no move from Matt Morris, but Susan Harlow's going to stick a nose in. He's going to have to try and run the outside liner. Is he going to try and go up and under James McKee? He will. So brilliant move there from Jackson as he manages to just take the track away, gets a position, and not only that, Haber and Myers now are going to try and drag themselves along as they battle. Down the inside goes Matt Morris at turn one. He takes fourth position away from Greg Sharp, and now all of a sudden Stokes and Loxton try and get in. Loxton looked hard to the inside, defended nicely there by Carl Stokes, the championship leader, but now he's got to be careful as Loxton, the former champion, mind you, the reigning champion here in AOSC, now starts to try and test the metal of the championship leader. I'm just looking at uh, Jack Boyd. I'm, I'm wondering if he's made a pit stop already. He's way, way, way down the field. I assume he has. It looks like he has. He's done a 2.15. That, uh, sorry, that's wrong. Uh, he did a 1.21 on his second lap, so he pitched on the opening lap, and I'm not surprised. He'll stay with Job Stewart as the rest of this race goes on. He will try and pick up positions as many as he possibly can at the moment. Tyres screaming through the final corner as Kyle Stokes gets a chance now on Greg Sharp, who is freight trained to the outside. Brett Loxon's going to have to try and go through as well and use all of his ability, but there through goes Kyle Stokes. Sharp tries to defend it. He's got no chance here as they get on the brakes. It's turn four. Troubles in front as Johnstone runs into it. Stokes gets a tap. Susan Harlow's going to go through all of the way. Mackay's going to try and go through that. Three wide heading to five. Can't do that, though, as now Haber's going to take advantage. Myers is going going to try and take advantage around the outside of Mackay at turn six and he can't quite get there I'm not sure of it but he can keep the nose in he can't so he'll now up and under my goodness me what a sequence of corners we just seen oh my goodness and what that effectively has done is Kyle was looking really really good as the car first of the cars that had pitted and was looking to pace potentially take the lead of the race now that goes to Jackson Suslin does and Jackson Susan Harlow all of a sudden has got the bit between his teeth because here comes Matt Morris again down the inside of Damian Johnstone he's got a bit of a turn of pace at the moment Matt Lapoidevin has not thrown the lead of this race just yet why goes Johnstone that's a gift there for Susan Harlow he's so happy about that but I don't think it's going to be a gift here for Kyle Stokes since he gets on the brakes into the right hand a lap six of 21 a quarter's distance score complete already and Damian Johnstone now is going to be the cork in the bottle which Kyle Stokes will be massively regressing right now just got to say what a great job from Matt Lapoidov and Mitchell Bales to continue um, 
leading the race from their really good grid positions. Oh, they've done a fantastic job from that sort of place as now down to the inside. Here comes Harley Haber sideways as he battles Loxton. Bit of contact there between them. And now they've got to get on the path quickly because there is Brady Myers. And Brady's bunch will try and attack up and try and gain positions just behind. But look again, Haber trying to get aggressive. Now all of a sudden, John Stone's on the defences. Carl Stokes tries to get out there. And Susan Harlow catches the leading four. But Matt Morris, don't count Matt. Matt Morris out. He's shown just as much pace, I think, as Susan Harlow. He was only, uh, I think, three tenths slower that last time by. He has the pace to defend. Oh, so many cars that look like they're much more suited to these colder conditions. Um, guys that look like they were all out of sorts in the hotter conditions, really lighting it up in the cool. They are, and they are proving that these cold conditions are a lot more favourable, a lot more grip, a lot more traction available here as there's a defensive line being given by Mitchell Bales he gets on the brakes and now you've got to start picking your opportunities here you can't go willy-nilly as Haber defends nicely against Brady Myers behind as Mackay has to hold off Jordan Ross here in another battle right at the back of this pack which is being held up very nicely at the moment by Damian Johnstone here comes the move for Matt Morris though for second position he gets down the inside of Mitchell Bales he gives him a tap to boot and Bales is going to bail a lot of positions as Johnson again defends that one as he goes through but all of a sudden there is Matt Morris in a podium position with Jackson Susan Harlow and now Matt Lapoidevin has got two very ferocious drivers behind him Matt Morris really um, using everything he's got available to him to try and maintain that position he's done extremely well off the start shame with that contact um, at turn one though that was looking like a really good race shaping up for Mitch Bales and now he's down probably outside the top yeah very much so at the moment and Mitchell Bales has not much to work with as again Havers tries to look inside of Loxton but he's not going to get anything of it as they start pushing look at Lapoidovin he is under pressure as he now sees the pen right colors starting to get filled up with blue and red and orange and black behind it's scary and there's the mistake the unforced error the point of in runs wide and matt morris leads this one as now johnstone's going to get through now also it's going to be more drama as the cross goes brady myers he slams oh, into no. Loxton. Haber manages to avoid it along with mckay along with ross along with scott big big incident as they checked up more and more it was a powder keg ready to ignite Oh, that really boiled over quickly. But you could tell with the the way the difference in the speed lead. from the point of him going off. Look at this for the lead. Two tires on the grass by Ryan Hunter Ray there for Jackson Susland Harlow. He could not find the move. Lap nine of twenty one will be score complete. Does he get the runoff for the exit? He gets a very good runoff for the exit. And now Matt Morris has got to prove he's got defensive capabilities against young Jackson Susan Harlow. Can he defend this one? Is there a chance of diving down to the inside? There is from young Jackson. And now Matt Morris trying to run the outside. Slightly outbreaks himself there and loses the position outright. Lead goes to 75. Fantastic move, but it's probably in Matt's best interest just to sit behind Jackson. If he needs to pit in this race, then losing as little time as possible will help him when he pits and emerges from the mid. Oh, and Mitchell Bales runs off wide, and he's going to drop more positions to Guy Leach, to James Duckworth, maybe to Marlon McMullen as well. He will. Michael Taliancic is in that pack as well, and he will take another cut just to stay out of the way. And there are positions being dropped left, right, and centre at the moment. Haber now behind Matt Lapoidevin. Can he find the move? No, he can't on the brakes into the left, right. So all of a sudden, it is now Susan Harlow leads. Morris is second. Kyle Stokes all of a sudden is now into third position. Massive compared to where he is fighting with Jack Boyd, who's only managed to get to 27th position. Five seconds off of Dial's group. There's Matthew Deere, a lap down, who stays a lap down. There's also Nick Hausler, who's struggling around. So he's finding the back markers now. My goodness, and we had all but written off Kyle at the start of the start of the night with that fairly average qualifying and not a particularly great race one. Race two has gone absolutely swimmingly for him, and now looks like he's going to extend his championship lead. Oh, and is there a look now for Haber? He tries to angle to the inside. Just enough room given. Oh, he taps the quarter panel. And I think that's DQ. Yes, it is DQ. Goodbye, Harley Haber. He's used up 15 instant points in 11 laps. Oh, my goodness. Well, 
We know Harley to be very aggressive. He's toned it down recently, but that is that's a real shame for Harley. He was very, very quick. He was very quick, and again, almost dramas there for Jordan Ross as he tries to be the next on the train to attack, and he's got James Scott behind his company, his own team, of course, and looking down on pit road, it does not look nice for Zuva Racing because Cracknell's on pit road along with Brett Loxton, so they've had an absolutely terrible day by their standards. Here's Guy Leach, though, trying to get past Greg Sharp. Not quite yet, but behind that, Duckworth and McMullen having a scrap. Oh, my goodness me, Taliancic almost finding himself sleuthing into the back or even pursuiting into the back of Marlon McMullen. Oh, and that would have been a very awkward uh, post-race conversation if that did eventuate. It would have been, but now look at Lapoidovin. He's under pressure. He breaks a lot later, though, than Jordan Ross, who tries to turn, gets one up and under, goes for the second and gets a big push off the exit, and he does so. Oh, he just about manages to manufacture a gap, and he makes the way through. So Jordan Ross jumps up inside the top five, which is something that he's looking for in terms of his championship and trying to stay with third place. And Kyle Stokes, who's actually clawing back Matt Morris here at two tenths a lap though so now Matt Morris starting to claw back eight tenths the gap eight laps to go when they cross the line and I think it has to be a defensive jobby there for Matt Morris if he wants to keep a hold of second yeah he's, he's definitely got an uphill battle uh, ahead of him now with the really fast guys making their way up to his rear bump Yes, and they're all trying to push, and they're all trying to gain those positions. Jack Boyd is up into 22nd position now, so he's gaining those points. He's four seconds behind Tony Gaffer and Peter Sattler. He'll be trying to get past them. Maybe Jet Bennett, maybe Dan Stevens, maybe Jonathan Ben if he can. That's the aim that he will have is a top 15 finish, which currently sits at Mitchell Bales, but I think that's too far away, so 17th probably will take. Jackson Susan Harlow's gap, though, extends to two seconds at the front. Massive dramas behind, though, as Andrew Gilliam sends one in on Scott as wide goes Matt Lapoidovin. He'll drop a number of positions, but all of a sudden, there is Gilliam, who has come out of nowhere to take those positions. Yeah, I did notice Andrew looking very aggressive on the previous lap behind the battle pack that we were watching. It looks like he's got the, he's got a much better car under him for this one. Probably overstepped the mark just so, ever so slightly on that one. Yeah, just ever so slightly. You've got to be careful about how much he oversteps that mark. He's got to make sure that those overtakes are clean. We've seen disqualifications already here as we head to six laps to go the next time they cross the line for Jackson Susland Harlow. Matt Morris though 56-9 he's responding he was actually marginally quicker that last time by than Kyle Stokes. What a drive from the 660 this is proving to be because he is showing every step of the way that he has pace and he can hold off the championship leader which is no mean feat. As a previous teammate of, um, of Matt, I know he's extremely fast, but he just doesn't have the luck um, to go with it, or the circumstances, quite often. But starting towards the front, as clearly one of the fastest cars that had not taken their pit stop, he's looking well and truly within his element in race two. Did you take his luck off of him when you moved teams away? Uh, I won't deny it, but won't <laughs> confirm either. Well, no denial, no confirmation, but it is still looking at Kyle Stokes because he's managing to pull that gap down. It was eight tenths. It now looks more like half a second as they make their way through the final corner, maybe even a little bit less than that. Matt Morris did not have the best lap in the world as his lap time will not actually count. A 56.8 from Kyle Stokes brings the gap down to four tenths of a second. And now the defensive driving has to begin. Look at Duckworth trying to find a way past Greg Sharp. He cannot find that way. As now Guy Leach will attack Matt Lapoidovin just in front of him. What a run from Guy Leach as he will try and send it down to the inside. He can't quite get it sorted. Duckworth can though and he bumps. Um... Yes, he bumps Greg Sharp off. And I think there may have to be a redress there. And down the inside goes McMullen. Contact. And there goes Duckworth for the second consecutive race. Oh, McMullen's got some big dramas now. That's Michael Taliantic out in the sandpit now. 
And all of this helps one driver, Jack Boyd, who will gain another position out of the disqualification, who will now need them. And Duckworth sounds his frustrations on the radio because he knows that he is so angered about the way that that second race has gone for him. But He's Matt out. Morris still defends. He is out. You're absolutely right. Five laps to go. Five laps of defending for Matt Morris. And does Carl Stokes go for the move or consolidate the position? And Alan Prost his way to the championship. Wow. Well then. All of it starts looking a little bit dicey. Matt Lapoidovin loses out finally to Guy Leach, who makes a way through and gets the position that he's been looking for. A little bit behind that, Jordan Ross is desperately trying to claw down Damian Johnstone. He's running out of time. He's two seconds back with five laps to go. He needs four tenths a lap. Stokes unable to get anything that he wants. And Susan Harlow is clear away at the moment at the front of this field. But it is still that battle for second, which certainly does seem very juicy at the moment as Greg Sharp tries to stay with Marlon McMullen. No dice. Also noticing that Damien Johnston, who looked a little bit out of sorts at the start of the race, has kept up with Kyle quite well. Sure, he doesn't quite have the pace. But also noticing the car behind him, Jordan Ross looks extremely quick at the moment. Don't count him out for, um, for a potential shot at the podium. Jack Boyd makes the move on Tony Gaffer, moves himself inside of the top 20, which he was desperate to do, and he has managed. And you can see just how difficult he's got at the time. He's got three seconds to find to the next pack, and that's his challenge. He did a 57-7 that last time by. The pack in front's doing 58-2s, led by Jet Bennett, who's doing a great job of keeping that pack at a quick pace. Jonathan Ben and Daniel Stevens is there. Boyd all over the back of Peter Sattler. He's got to get that position to damage limitation compared to Kyle Stokes, who now himself has three laps of racing to go as Matt Morris has pulled himself a six-tenth lead as they have traffic. And that's maybe what Kyle Stokes is backing off for here. Traffic has been so paramount here at Road Atlanta's short layout. Well, he's only effectively racing, I would believe, Jordan Ross, as Damien uh, would need to pit. So he's got a good cushion to be a little conservative and to consolidate a podium, which will be fantastic for his championship. It would be, and Brenton O'Brien knows that he wants championships. Wherever he goes, he's got some of the best drivers in the world at Evolution Racing Team. He's got the merger with Apex Racing Team as well, and he is building his dynasty the way that he oh, Matt, would want to. And no way. 660 starting to run himself into issues. And look at this. Let's go, Ricardo Zonta and Michael and Mika Hakkinen and Michael Schumacher as they head down the hill. There was mistakes, there were problems, and suddenly Kyle Stokes pounces. That was brilliant sessional awareness from all of those guys involved. Well done on the pass and well done on making sure you didn't all end up in the fence. That would have been disaster. It's not over though, Matt Morris certainly does have a turn of pace heading through left and right, have the tyres let go on him though, Jordan Ross desperately trying to chase down Damian Johnstone, I still think he's a little too far away, white flag coming for Jackson Suslan Harlow who leads this event outright but Matt Morris is trying everything, you can see he's wiggling through the corner trying to get some form of traction as he tries to put the power down as early as he can, he's not finding it for the moment, white flag will come out, Matt Morris has got maybe two chances if he wants to pick up this, vic uh, this second place finish and at the moment not finding anything, mistake from Jordan Ross, he will have to serve the slowdown and maybe fall back backwards into Andrew Gilliam so he's got to be careful of that but Mullen and Bale's going at it what about though if you look further back Jack G Boyd he's got past Stevens he's up into 18th and he's on the back of Jonathan Ben now so he's looking at 17th maybe 16th position if he can get a good last lap going up to Kyle Stokes though in second position holding off that train heading down the hill he goes in second place and he's got no worries at all at the moment here barring a mistake from Matt Morris behind, he's able to just pull away in the way that Kyle Stokes has consistently been able to do race in, race out in this series. Final corners loom though for Jackson Suslan Harlow, who deserves the pace that he's found, arguably bouncing back 
from big issues when it came to Phillip Island and V8 Scops. But in Australian touring cars, can you match 75? Victory for Jackson Susan Harlow. Kyle Stokes will pick up second position with Matt Morris and managing to get himself into third. Damian Johnstone will hold off Jordan Ross to the line. We look further back now to Jack G. Boyd as he looks to have his battle. He sends one big deep on the inside. No, he backs out a bit there. Great driving from Jonathan Ben. He was aggressive and ultimately the position will not go to Jack Boyd who's trying desperately to get to the inside. He won't find it. It will only be 18th for Jack Boyd. Vital championship points lost. Oh, and I bet you he's ruining the decision not to pit in race one. As much sense as it made at the time, um, it looks like his overall night has paid the price. It has, and it was at the hands of Harley Haber that the price was paid. But everyone across the line, classified results then, up on your screen. This is how everything finished here at Road Atlanta. Jackson Susan Harlow goes from 19th to 1st to pick up the victory in the reverse grid race with Kyle Stokes getting 2nd with Matt Morris in 3rd position with a great drive from the 660. Damian Johnstone holds off Jordan Ross for a top 5 finish with Andrew Gilliam getting 6th. It's James McKay in 7th with James Scott in 8th. Guy Leach, don't discredit Guy Leach's drive. He went from 35th all the way up to 9th as one of the biggest hard charges in the field. Matt Lapoidovin struggled, but had a good accounting of himself in the early stages. He gets 10th place. In 11th, we have Michael Taliantic, and then in 12th, from the back of the grid, Marlon McMullen, a solid drive, an unfortunate incident midway through, though. Mitchell Bales, our pole setter, did so well at the start, but unfortunately, his race only ends up in 13th, when he probably deserved a little better. Greg Sharp got the elbows out to get to 14th. Jeff Bennett up to 15th, a solid drive there. John Jonathan Ben 16th. Uh, sorry, yep, 16th. Jack Boyd, the the, the um, unfortunate story of tonight, I guess, after picking up race one down in 17th. Daniel Stevens 18th. Peter Sattler in 19th, and in 20th, it's Tony Gaffer. Job Stewart had to make a stop. He only gets 21st. Brady Myers gets 22nd. He had a terrible day. Uh, finishing just ahead of Nick Hausler and Mark Dial. Stephen Varga gets 25th with Jamie Stovall behind both of whom had to make a stop, as did Scott Clark, who finished 27th with David Kinman as well in 28th. That strategy really not paying off in the opening stages. Gary Cooper gets 29th and Chris Barnes, the first of lapped vehicles and retirements in 30th position. In 31st, a bit of a night to forget for Christian Smart. Had better pace than certainly the finishes he got tonight. Then we had Matthew Deer, James Duckworth. What a shame for James. So he ended up uh, falling foul of the of the DQ limit and was unable to finish race two. Harley Haber, uh, another disaster story, a great race one and unfortunate undoing in race two. Matthew Loxton, very un uh, uncharacteristic race for, for him down in 36th and he'll be very disappointed with that one. Jacob Knight, Mick Cracknell with that awful incident on the at the opening stage of race two, and Shane Evans rounding out the field. And what great racing we have seen despite uh, the incidents that have been up and down the field. But my goodness, what a way to signal the start towards the end of the championship. The road continues, Ross, and you have to say you've been a driver who has been up there in many top series. You, of course, have yourself... Uh, a sprint series championship to your name in the uh, Australian region. You have been uh, a top 10 finisher in the championship when it's come to um, V8 Scops. Just how important are races like that to battle drivers that you don't normally race against? Well, I think Kyle really proved the merit of just consistent finishes, even though he's not picking up victories, picking up points over his rivals in uh, as and when he can get them will make it very difficult for him to be caught towards the end of the championship, even if he doesn't quite have the pace over the likes of Jordan Ross, Brett Loxton or Jack Boyd, who we saw made a, a very, uh, I guess, um, in hindsight, a bad decision tonight. And that could happen again later in the season, which will only bolster a, um, a more consistent outlook towards the end of this championship. Joining me now in the commentary booth is Jackson Susan Harlow, who picks up the race two victory. Jackson, 19th to first. is always 
very difficult. How do you keep calm in the opening three laps when you have to be out there aggressive and picking off drivers one at a time with maybe not much choice? Uh, it was a really fun race. I really enjoyed the reverse grid race. Um, yeah, I just put my head down and drove like I always do and um, try and pass as many people as quick as possible. And um, yeah, as soon as I saw gaps, I was just showing the nose, pushing people into mistakes and trying to get past as quick as possible. And that's what a lot of moves I made was, just pushing people into mistakes. And yeah, it worked out. And then, of course, you find yourself at the front of the field trying to make moves. You had a very resilient Matt Morris to try and get by. Matt Lepoidevin uh, made a mistake. He fell off, as did Damian Johnstone, as did Greg Sharp. It seemed that the drivers who were at the front succumbed to the peer pressure. Do you feel that made your life a little bit easier, knowing you could battle one-on-one? -on -one? Yeah, it was um, a lot easier. But um, at the same time, I would have liked to have had a bit more of a battle with them because, yeah, it was... A good race, and that's what the reverse grid race is for, to have some good battles. And, yeah, it was really fun. And, of course, you're now looking towards the next rounds in the championship. Of course, you yourself have been a little bit in and out of AOSC, but, of course, um, you certainly have a lot to prove, and you've shown that again with a victory. Um, and in terms of how you battle, I assume that everything's okay at TTL, especially after what happened in Scops. Yeah, um, everything is okay. It was a um, big mistake on my part in Scops. So I misjudged it and, yeah, crashed with my teammate, which you never want to do. But, um, yeah, it's racing. But, um, yeah, hopefully I can do the next round. I don't know. It's really hard with real racing commitments. But, yeah, every time I'm home, I do the races I can. And, yeah. I will correct you and say teammates, plural. But uh, before we let you go, any shout outs to sponsors? Ah uh, yeah, down under graphics, TTL, SimWorks, and Thigh Designs for the help. Well, no worries at all. Jackson Susan Harlow with a very impressive victory to his name. But Ross, final thoughts as we close proceedings here this evening at Road Atlanta. I'm just trying to think. Didn't I tip Jackson for a result tonight? I think um think he absolutely proved us right that the that the racer in him was um really useful, particularly in, in race two to get it done. So really well done to, to Jackson and all, all the podium guys, Kyle and, and Matt putting on performances that we quite frankly weren't expecting. So great job to them. And it was it was a great race to to watch and, and call and it was an absolute pleasure to um be in the com box with you today uh tonight, Jake. No worries at all. And just a reminder, ladies and gentlemen, you can contact Ross Rizzo if you want your lottery numbers to be picked. Uh, you can call uh, some random number and he may or may not respond. But for the time being, that's Ross Rizzo. That's Josh Nowak, who's been on cameras. I'm Jake Sperry. And let's call things down here with AOSC because we have to thank LeBlanc. We have to thank West End Mazda as well, who are the official title sponsor of the series too. But... With great racing, a great championship now starts to bring itself to the boil. Carl Stokes may not be the flashiest, may not be the quickest, may not be the best qualifier, but my goodness is he consistent, and he consistently finds himself at the pointy end come the end of races. It was Jackson's night, though, overall, but we are heading to more great racing in two weeks' time. Check it out on the IRAC Esports Network along with every other Channel that you can get, RaceBot TV, Global Sim Racing Channel, Podium Esports, the likes of so many others. Apex Racing TV is another. Make sure you check all of them out on all of their broadcasts too. But that's it for us here at Road Atlanta, and we will see you very soon. This is the original esport racing game. This is iRacing.